Woe to you of earth and sea. Welcome to Satan is My Superhero, a show for atheists, scoffers, heathens and unbelievers. I'm your host, Judas Falling. In this episode, we dip back into our Dungeons and Dragons discussion and bring it to a conclusion, but not before doubling down on the delusional deluge of disinformation. If you think the dishonest, disreputable deriders of Dungeons and Dragons disgraced themselves in the last episode, then... TTs, I've run out of D words. Help me out here. Dig in for a downpour of disturbed, deceptive dipshits. Mum, TT said a swear. Listen here, you undeveloped little air breather. You don't want to log on and find all your Robux have been spent on unused avatar items, do you? You wouldn't dare! Just try me, you juvenile biped. What's going on in here? Nothing, just saying how much I love TTs. In his 1984 comic book, Dark Dungeons, fundamentalist Christian comic book creator Jack Chick portrays a teenage girl who is drawn into a world of witchcraft through D&D. But after a close friend commits suicide over the game, our protagonist is saved by a preacher who instructs her to... Gather up all your occult paraphernalia like your rock music, occult books, charms, Dungeons and Dragons material. Don't throw them away. Burn them! Personally, I would love to see a study comparing how many of the people who burn books can actually read books. Pastor, I'm afraid for my daughter's soul. She's listening to licentious rock music and playing Dungeons and Dragons. What should I do? Burn it. Burn it all. Okay, if you say so. I do. Now, on a completely unrelated topic, did you know I'm running a special on matches and lighter fluid this week? Chick's comics are filled with all kinds of conspiracy theories. He is most obsessed with the Catholic Church, claiming they keep the name of every Protestant in the world on file with the intention of carrying out another Inquisition one day. He also attacks Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, and of course it goes without saying, Freemasons. I like you, Jack, so I'm going to be straight with you. There is no way this company will publish your comics. Your artwork is rudimentary at best. Your stories are simplistic and you beat the reader over the head with your message. Have you ever heard of subtext, Jack? And and speaking of your message, your young earth creationism, anti-evolutionary theories, and homophobia are outdated. These ideas are dying. The times have changed, Jack. People are better educated and more enlightened now. It's 1959, for crying out loud. By the end of this century, no one will be bigoted enough to buy your stuff. Jack Chick sales have exceeded half a billion over the last 60 years. That's right, that's billion with a B. And he is the most published comic book author in the world who you've never heard of. 500 million comics? I do hope you atheists never get into book burnings. Half of North America will go up in flames. Returning to Virginia, the spiritual home of Dungeons & Dragons hysteria, in 1985, Winston Matthews sought the Republican nomination for Attorney General in the state. He proudly announced he was campaigning on just two issues, maintaining the death penalty in the state and abolishing Dungeons & Dragons. I need some advice on running my campaign, and they told me you're the man to see Mr. Atwater. I sure am. Now, you need a hot-button topic, something that's trending in Virginia right now, like uh, Dungeons & Dragons. That stupid board game? It's a tabletop role-playing game, actually, but yes. I'd be embarrassed campaigning on a kid's game. Look, the days of campaigning on real issues are over. It's all conspiracy theories and fear-mongering now. Do you realize more Americans believe the devil is real than watch the World Series? I promise you, run on Dungeons & Dragons. You can't lose. Matthews lost. But before he did, he said Dungeons & Dragons contained... Devil worship, Satanism and pornography. Ew, why are the dice all sticky? While Dungeons & Dragons was not banned in Virginia, the death penalty did survive for another 36 years. Virginia had a proud history of capital punishment, being the very first colony to execute anyone on American soil way back in 1608 when they shot a spy. Terribly sorry, old chap, but we're going to have to shoot you. We're Americans now. Eh, what, what? Oh, bugger! And in the following 400 years, Virginia executed more inmates than any other U.S. state. Suck it, Texas! 
But despite the best efforts of Winston Matthews and others, the state executed its last prisoner in 2017 and capital punishment was finally abolished there in 2021, making it the first southern state to do so. Welcome to Virginia. 1,825 days without an execution. Suck it again, Texas! In 1985, Oklahoma teenager Sean Sellers shot a convenience store clerk, Robert Paul Bauer. Then, six months later, shot dead his mother and stepfather, Vonda and Lee, while they slept in their bed. Throughout the lengthy trial and appeals process, Sellers had claimed to have been a practicing Satanist and possessed by a demon. Once in prison, he miraculously found Jesus. You are never going to guess who I found hiding under my bed. Renouncing his previous ways and expecting clemency, Sellers later said, After I became a Satanist, I used D&D manuals for their magical symbols and character references for my initial studies. I also used my experience as a dungeon master to introduce people to Satanic behavior concepts and recruit them into the occult. When the Jesus thing didn't work out, he claimed to have disassociative identity disorder, all to no avail. Sellers would become famous for being the only person executed in the U.S. for crimes committed while under the age of 17 since the reinstatement of the death penalty in 1976. He received a lethal injection for his crimes in 1999. Let's go, boys! I'm going to take a short break from the show right now to talk about my sponsors and Patreon. I don't currently have sponsors or Patreon, but if you'd like to support the show, you can do that by buying my novel. It's called Chaos Machine by Judas Fawley. It's available through Amazon. You don't need a Kindle to read it. Almost any digital device will do. Don't forget, Chaos Machine by Judas Falling. Now, back to the show. Maestro of the moral panic himself, Geraldo Rivera, attacked D&D in a two-part series called Games That Kill for Entertainment Tonight in 1987, claiming 90 deaths had been linked to role-playing games. So, Mrs. Jones... Can you please explain to me how your husband choked to death on a billiard ball while dressed as a unicorn? I think he must have forgotten our safety word. In their 1988 22-page essay, A Christian Response to Dungeons and Dragons, The Catechism of the New Age, Pastor George Grant, who we mentioned in the homophobic demonization part 3 LGBT spells Satan episode, I don't like it, and theologian Peter Lightheart reveal their deepest fears in the opening paragraphs. The game, you see, doesn't take place on a board. Instead, you play in your head. In D&D, the basic rule is use your imagination. Stretch it to the limit. Use your imagination? What next? Critical thought? Oh, no, that will never do. They also wrote, Anyone familiar with fantasy roleplay rulebooks is learning the terminology of witchcraft and Satanism. More likely, a seed is sown and he is almost imperceptibly drawn into the occult. Has anyone ever told these Christians females can worship Satan as well? They also go on to make this claim. Not only are gods, devils and demons treated as fantasy Jesus himself is included as one of the deities. Note carefully the logic here. It's just a game. The monsters aren't real. The magical powers aren't real. The gods aren't real. Jesus is one of the gods. While I certainly agree gods and Jesus aren't real, Jesus is simply not in Dungeons and Dragons. So that was a lie. But imagine if Jesus was in D&D. Jesus is coming back angry, and he has had some modifications done, brethren and sistren. He has had his left arm removed, and a big-ass rocket launcher put in its place. Across his oh-so-perfect chest, there are two golden bandoliers of ammunition. And strapped to his back, the goddamn Ark of the Covenant, you know it is true. Jesus is coming back looking just a little bit bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2, and the reason for that is that Arnie is going to be his first disciple, because Jesus will be driving a Hummer. Oh, praise be! And on the roof of that Hummer will be the flamethrower of the Lord, with which he shall lay waste to the miserable sinners. He is going straight to Snoop 
dog's birthday party and people... With homophobic fundamentalist Christian... I think by now we've established homophobic fundamentalist Christian is a tautology. Radio host and author Tex Mars, who believes the world is flat, Judaism and Catholicism are Satanism, the Clintons and Newt Gingrich are Marxists, and Barbie Doll is the goddess of the sun, among many other things, has published books and videos such as... Satan's New Age Plan for a One World Order unholy bible versions of the new age dark secrets of the new age mystery mark of the new age new age lies to women and most pertinent to this episode his 1988 book ravaged by the new age satan's plan to destroy kids okay guys we need a plan to destroy kids any suggestions we could create a satanic board game a board game Have you taken a lame pill? No, no, Oracular We've talked about this. These meetings are a safe place where we speak freely without judgment. There are no bad ideas. Go on, Semyaza. Well, this will be a cool board game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know I said this is a safe space, but let's not be ridiculous. In Ravaged by the New Age, Satan's plan to destroy kids, Mars says... The ever-popular Dungeons & Dragons fantasy role-playing game is ever-present in toy stores and department stores. This game is nothing more than an introduction to the occult. You can buy many of Mars' books in department stores. Like, for example, I found a copy of... Big Sister is Watching You, Hillary Clinton and the White House feminists who now control America and tell the president what to do. For $4.65 in a particularly famous US department store. So yeah, American department stores do sell evil. Hi, can you direct me to your guns? God bless you, ma'am. If you carry on straight through men's undergarments, hang a left at the fragrance counter, you'll find the assault rifles right next to the toy department. In 1992, Pastor Wynne Worley made a video in which he claims the Star of David, karate, tattoos, piercings, along with Dungeons and Dragons, are all occult spirits, and then states... If you've dabbled in any of these, then you're cursed... Uh... Your children are cursed. Your grandchildren are cursed. Your great-grandchildren are cursed. This may sound like the hyperbolic rantings of a deranged psychopath, but Worley actually has scriptural precedent for his prescribed multi-generational punishment. We have this little gem from Exodus. And not just some minor passage in Exodus. This is from the Ten Commandments. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You see, it's from the Bible, so... So it is the hyperbolic rantings of a deranged psychopath. Have you heard the word of Jesus? Yes, I have, and I've got to say, I would be all on board, but I can't be saved. My great-grandfather played Dungeons and Dragons one time. Get away from me, Devil Spawn! In 1995, alleged former Satanist Bill Schnoberlin penned the essay... Straight Talk on Dungeons and Dragons. ...in which he said... There is no doubt that Dungeons and Dragons and its imitators are right out of the pit of hell. No Christian or or sane, decent individual of whatever faith really should have anything to do with them. Did you say former Satanist? I don't remember seeing him at any of the meetings. He also claims during his 16 years as a Satanist... A couple of game writers actually came to my wife and I as prominent sorcerers in the community. They wanted to make certain the rituals were authentic. (laughs) For the most part, they are. I've never seen a 20-sided dice at a satanic ritual. I've never seen any dice at a satanic ritual. If I'm being really honest, satanic rituals only ever occur in the imaginations of Christians who are a little buzzed on the Kool-Aid. In his book and DVD called Mormonism's Temple of Doom, Schnobelin also claims to be a former Mormon and says the Mormon church is created by witches for witches. I know I've made a similar point to this before in the science fiction Satan episode. Good afternoon, ma'am. Have you heard about the book of... Is that your spaceship? Yes, ma'am. Sign me up! But I think the Mormon should really lean into this type of stuff. Excuse me, ma'am. Can we talk to you about the Book of Mormon? Get off my porch with your boring religion. Oh, we're not boring. Are you sure? Because you look like Dilbert. We're witches. 
Really? What witch stuff do you do? Um, we... Um... Uh... We ride broomsticks. I saw you arrive on bicycles. What is a bicycle if not a broomstick on wheels? Okay, I'm listening. Schnobelin also claims to have been a former mason and studied hard for his 32nd degree which is just about as high as you can go. Oh, he was high, all right. And in his book, Masonry Beyond the Light, states, The father of modern Freemasonry said, Lucifer is God. We discussed just how unsatanic the Freemasons are in the episode, Revolutionary Satanic Freemasons. It's Satan. Tell me it's Satan. No, it's just an excuse to get away from the wife. In Schnobelin's nine-hour video titled Interview with an Ex-Vampire, A True Story Yeah, that's nine hours of your life you'll never get back He claims to expose The reality of vampires and werewolves and the positions they hold in the dark world of the occult That's right, old Billy Boy claims to have made a deal with Lucifer himself and turned into a vampire W-T-F And when I say vampire, I mean an actual vampire Fangs, unable to walk around in the daytime and drinking blood. He really claims this. If you say so, he also claims he has had sex with a fallen angel. I have to admit, I'm very excited. So how do we do this? You bend over. If your IQ's low enough to believe anything this con man says... No one's that stupid. Like to tell the truth, but it can't be said Because of this microchip in my head Oh, yeah, I see. Now I retract my last statement. Snowballin's current bio claims... Following the Holy Spirit's lead, he acquired a doctorate in naturopathic medicine and a degree in nutritional herbology becoming a certified natural health professional in 2004. I've always said naturopaths are bloodsuckers. You know, we found conspiracy theory books sell better if the author is a doctor. I'm not going to medical school for eight years. Oh no, there's a much easier way. Schnobelin is following a long-held tradition of hucksters peddling their less-than-stellar fiction as fact that goes all the way back to the Bible itself. Stop it. This former Satanist trope can be found in other works of fiction sold as fact like Michelle Remembers and The Satan Seller. Written for an overly superstitious Christian market ready and waiting to be thrilled and terrified by tales of demons and evil cabals. Have you read the Bible? No, I don't like science fiction. Schnobelin doesn't know anything about Satanism or witchcraft. He only knows what an American Protestant imagination can come up with. Much like Michelle Remembers and the Satan Seller, these so-called satanic rites always seem to look like a bastardization of rituals from Catholicism and Judaism. I think that's no coincidence. Hey, we should start our own religion. What a great idea! What will we call our god? Let's call him John. Okay, let me start writing this down. J-O-H-N. You spell John with an H? Apostate! I would have to stress credulity to the limit to believe for a second that Schnobelin was ever any of these things to the extent he claims. He's just running through a fundamentalist Christian hate list. Check the list before calling the exorcist. Mormons, Freemasons, Satanists. And now he's publicly claiming to have entered the world of New Age. TTs, is New Age on that hate list? Yes, we discussed it a lot in the last episode, Dungeons and Dragons 1, Demon Pulling. Meditation? Why don't I just murder a baby and sacrifice it to Satan while I'm at it? I can already predict the title of Schnobelin's next two books. Coming soon from acclaimed and not crazy at all author, Dr. Bill Schnobelin, Satanic Naturopathy, and his exciting expose on New Age Satanism, Herbs, The Devil's Medicine. Not an actual medical practitioner. I'd like to take a short break from the show to talk to you about the novel, Chaos Machine, by Judas Falling. You should buy it and support the show. That is all. Now back to the show. 
In 2000, self-proclaimed U.S. Spiritual Warfare Network Regional Coordinator Diane Buker published a teaching called Spiritual Mapping for Effective Spiritual Warfare. In it, she claimed, The Lord instructed me to get a map. On this map, we place colored pins with each color representing certain categories of unrighteous works. Red pins are for cult and occult churches. Green pins are for pornography. Orange pins are for Freemasons. Oh, you would know if I had anything to do with the Freemasons. For a start, it would be fun. Purple pins are for what Bucher calls... Abortuaries. Yellow pins are for places that are owned and or operated by homosexuals. White pins are for places where commercial sex work takes place. And for the edification of this episode, blue pins are for cult and occult establishments, which Bucher explains are businesses involved in the occult that, as she says, may include... Comic book and baseball card shops. Many of them sell magic cards. Dungeons and Dragons as well. So she's got a map. Presumably on her wall at home, covered in red, green, orange, purple, yellow, white, and blue pins? Oh, how delightful. It must look like a veritable rainbow. You know, the map alone should earn her house a yellow pin. This spiritual warfare was not invented by Buca, and what she is advocating here would be described as strategic level intercession by its adherents. Don't worry, a spiritual warfare episode explaining all of this is on the to-do list one day. What are the black pins for, Diane? That's where anyone who's ever made me angry lives. There sure are a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, why did you put a black pin on my house just then? In 2013, Pat Robertson... Net worth estimated between 200 million and 1 billion. Who we also mention in Homophobic Demonization Part 3, LGBT, Spell Satan, and the Gamer Satan episodes. What are you doing, Pat? Using my powerful legs to thread this camel through the eye of a needle. Said on his very successful 700 Club TV show. Dungeons and Dragons, that really destroyed people's lives. I mean, they got into this thing and they were almost, it, it was like demonic. Pat let me borrow his private jet just last week to fly to St. Bart's. It was lovely. Fundamentalist Christian author Gary North, who predicted Y2K was going to destroy Western civilization and would like to see the US become a Handmaid's Tale-styled theocracy. He also wants offences like blasphemy and homosexuality to be punishable by death. And when I say death, Gary advocates the method of execution be a good old public stoning. We, the angry mob, sentence you, deviant, to death. Now he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. Well, come on, someone pick up a stone. Why are you all sheepishly looking at the ground? North has also had a long history of attacking Dungeons and Dragons and wrote as recently as 2016... In entertainment and popular literature... Magic and witchcraft have fused with fantasy and science fiction to give a whole new range of occult options. Dungeons and Dragons, Wizardry, Conan the Barbarian, and an endless number of Saturday morning cartoon shows for children displaying the wonders of the occult. Saturday morning cartoon shows? Welcome to 1992, Gary. Actually, you know what? I'll send him a message on his pager. Howdy, it's the Reverend Steph here. Most of the music in this episode was supplied by the comedy disco punk band The Genuine Hoots of Joy. If you want to hear the songs in their entirety, check out Hoots of Joy on YouTube. You might recognise the lead singer. Uh, 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 Okay, it's uh, it's me. I have to say, researching these two episodes, I was genuinely surprised how often the death penalty came up. That was weird. But I guess the biggest lesson and something I hadn't even considered going into this was the real subtext under the opposition to Dungeons and Dragons and RPGs in general is fear of the imagination. Eve imagined, and look what happened next. Yes, the entire human race was born. You're welcome. On one last personal note, our oldest child, Spawn One, is an avid D&D player. He has been playing regularly for three or four years now and sadly has shown absolutely no interest in devil worship. So I'm sorry, Pat, Tom, Bill, Jack, Winston, Geraldo, George, Peter, Tex, Other Bill, Wynn, Diane, Other Pat and Gary, but epic fail. 
Guys, we've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for a few years now. Do you think we should start worshipping Satan? No! No, definitely not. Okay, okay, jeez. I was only asking. I'd like to finish with one more quote from Peter Lightheart and George Grant. They hate their God-given role in the God-directed drama of history, and they play D&D in order to create their own identity and their own history. I agree, and that's why in my self-created identity, Satan is my superhero. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, subscribe, you know the drill. But more importantly, please recommend this show to just one person. I mean literally one person. Choose that person well. Endless number of Saturday morning cartoon shows for children. Naturopathy. I hear I. Listen here, you undeveloped little biddle spittle blip blip blip. I'll go again if you don't mind. Guys, we've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for a few years yet. Sneers. Why do I keep saying sneers? I forgot my line. I'd be embarrassed at camp. Ugh. There are no buys. The reality of vampires and where. Wait, is this guy for real? You have to be shitting me. <laughs> That's excellent.